All right, so uh, I'm super excited to have uh, Sporlin here. They are uh, uh, you know, amazing, amazing organization, and uh, they've been a been a sponsor on and off over the years. Uh, I'm a huge supporter of them and what they do. So, uh, without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to them to talk about what they've got. You're supposed to clap. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So today I have my two helpers here with me. My name is Mallory David. I'm the local sales engineer down here in Florida. I'm based out of Lakeland. My territory goes all the way up through southern Georgia. We got Dennis Setchfield. Dennis, why don't you tell him what you do? I am the e-business manager for Sporland Division. And then we have Jim Jansen, and he's really our comedy at our company. I, I do as little as possible. So that's what we do, but we're here today to talk to you about ZoomLock. Now I see a lot of familiar faces. We talked to a lot of you at our booth, but we're just gonna do a run through of ZoomLock Max and ZoomLock Push, what they are and how to use them. So we'll start off first talking about ZoomLock Push. We have two different styles. We have a removable style and a non-removable style. Now I've talked to a lot of people, what's the difference between the removable and the non-removable aside from the fact that it's removable and non-removable? <laughs> Anyone remember what I said? Great. Wow, thank you so much, that's great. Okay, it's actually the O-ring inside, all right? So the O-ring inside of our, of our removable can withstand R22. The O-ring inside of the non-removable cannot. So if you still do any work with R22 and you're interested in using push, remember you have to get the removable option. All right, what else about zoom lock push? One thing we get a lot is pressure. People think that these are just gonna blow off the system. We've never seen that happen, all right? The pressure rating for zoom lock push is 870 PSI. Now we do extensive testing at Parker Sporlin, and when we've done pressure testing, it did not burst until 4,300 PSI. So I don't think your system will get that high, so I don't think you have to worry about pressure, um, but that's something important to note. Installation for ZoomLock Push is very similar to ZoomLock Max. I'm gonna do a brief demo on how to install ZoomLock Max, so we'll go over that as well. Anything else you can think of that the people should know about ZoomLock Push? That's it, it's as simple as that, you push it on. One thing that is important to note is we do have the SAE flare fitting options, which are great for mini splits. So if you're looking to go braze free, you don't wanna invest in a tool right away, I always recommend trying one out on a mini split system. It's a great first place to start. All right, now thank you Jim for displaying our ZoomLock Max. This tool is a claw key tool. Through Sporlin, you can purchase the Rothenberger tool at your local Sporlin distributor. But today we got our cloud key here. Now the ZoomLock Max rated up to 700 PSI. So it's actually slightly less than ZoomLock Push, which is quite astounding to many people, myself included. But when we've done pressure testing on it, we burst it at 2,100 PSI. So again, you're not gonna have to worry about pressure of your system. Thank you, Jim. I'm gonna go ahead and take this from you now. Can Excellent I job. Lunch now? No, no you're here for moral support. <laughs> All right. So now we're gonna go through a quick demo on how to do this. The biggest thing with Zoom Lock is preparation. I know we all wanna go home, but preparation's important, so please do not skip preparation when you're doing zoom lock fittings. That is when we see the leaks. Everyone thinks it's gonna leak. It only leaks if you don't do it right. So, oh good, I have Dennis, because I'm the microphone holder. All right, so first things first, once you cut your pipe, there's probably some burrs. It's really important we get the burrs out of there. We do that with our deburring, which Dennis was just holding. Deburr the inside, deburr the outside. If there's any burrs, that's what's gonna cut through your O-ring. That's what's gonna cause the leaks. Now we recommend Scotch-Brite to sand up the outside of our fitting. We recommend Scotch-Brite over other sandpapers 
because it does not leave harsh divots and lines within your um, piping. Sometimes some sandpapers are too harsh for the copper. Now we can see that or the color difference right there. That's what we're looking for. We want to make sure it's nice and shiny. And now we want to run our finger along our fitting or along the pipe. Make sure with your fingernail that you don't feel any of those harsh lines. That's where the refrigerant will escape. As long as you clean it up, you're good to go. <coughs> now we're going to use our depth gauge and we're just going to mark it so we know how far to push our fitting on. Once you do it a few times, you'll know the fitting's pushed on, but in the beginning it's good to mark it. Then we're just going to push our fitting right on there. It's a nice, tight, snug fitting. There is a stop. There is a stop. So, you know <coughs> so you know it's on, but you got your line for backup. All right, now's the fun part. We're going to place it into our jaws. The Zoomlock Max jaws are a three-point press, so it's going to crimp once before, on, and after the O-ring, ensuring a leak-free seal every time as long as you cleaned it up properly. And as long as you put the right end in, Dennis, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so now that we checked, we have the right end in the tool, uh, we're gonna press the trigger. That's it, that was what? What do you think, three seconds? So significantly faster than your braze joint. Also, considering the fact that some braze joints are rather large based on the line size, it takes a lot longer to do a good braze joint. Just like with brazing, Zoomlock Max is all about the technique. With proper technique, you should not have any problems. The other thing too, with the Zoomlock Max, they're easy. They are sold in these hermetically sealed bags, so you won't have all the debris and stuff that would be in your fitting. Uh, having them sealed helps out with your prep. So that's how you find them? At your local Sporland distributor. Correct. Do we have any questions from the audience? We've had a lot of questions. Yes, please. Nope, both Zoomlock Max and Zoomlock Push work with soft copper. Come on, give me something else. Yes. <coughs> yes. That's a great question. Re repeat the question. Okay, repeating the question. Um, he loves the product. Thank you. And um, is there a reason that we're not using it on all residential system, just as an industry as a whole? Jim, you got any ideas on that one? I think people like to braise still. I think it's a preference in art form. You have. I mean, I do, but you got anything to add? You know, a lot of us are old timers and we're set in our ways, right? You know, I like fire. I like to set things on fire. There's a place for fire. You get paid to use a torch and set things on fire. Sometimes you don't want to set things on fire. Sometimes customers don't like their building to burn down. So there's where you want to do something different. And this is something different. How's that? Sounds good. Yeah. Let's ask the question asker. Did that answer? No. No, well, it didn't answer. <laughs> oh, our o the OEMs, yes. Right. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. Right. The fire. It's a great answer to TXV problems. No burning, no leaking. Right. That's an excellent question. At what point were the manufacturers put longer stubs on the units? We are actively working with these manufacturers. Um, so 
I think there's a lot of talk, and I think especially as this becomes more adopted in the industry, the manufacturers are going to be forced to do that at some point. What we do recommend currently right now, obviously at Sporlin, we're not going to tell you brazing is going to be eliminated. These are tools to help you and make your job a little bit easier. But right now what we do have is we have a lot of contractors that will keep their brazing equipment at their location, do all that work in the shop, pre-braze that onto your unit, then take it out, and then once you're on site, you don't have to carry the tools and the hot work permit and all that. So not a perfect answer yet, but we're working on it, um, and I think we'll see it shortly. Good question. Mm-hmm. Right. So, right. Yes. We have not seen any of them fail, aside from someone not doing it correctly. So ZoomLock originally launched 10 years ago, so we have some stuff in the field that's been working that long. 10 years in Holden, but we're so confident in this product, we already have it warranty for 15 years. So. Right, so, exactly. Back to your question, sir. Um, times where it's hard to get anything in there, that's half the reason we launched with ZoomLock Push. Just to make it a little easier, you can push the fitting on in those tight situations. You don't have to have a tool or your brazing, because sometimes there are those tight spots, and that's where Zoom Lock Push really shines. Slide it on. What about what? A close quarters tool. You know, we were talking about that earlier today, and it's something we'll definitely take back to headquarters. We're constantly working to expand our lineup and give you guys what you need out in the field, so we'll take that back. Yes? So at Sporlin, we like to say that nothing should be in the system except oil and refrigerant. Um, that's not what everyone believes in the industry. Jim, do you know? He left. Oh. I was going to ask you about the O-rings and other additives in the system that at Sporlin we don't typically like. But the O-rings, are they at risk of failing with other additives in the system? You know, our con I did a contaminant controls presentation yesterday, and, and there were two things that I suggested should circulate through a vapor compression refrigeration cycle or system, and they were what Mallory said earlier, refrigerant and the lubricant that you need for the compressor. Other than that, you're adding something into the system that you don't know what the heck it's going to do long term. Now, sometimes there's good reasons to do that. I don't mean to rain on anybody's parade who sells chemical products, but in a perfect world, you wouldn't add anything, and in, and in that regard, you're not going to have interactions with things. If you add stuff in that we don't know what it is, who knows what's going to happen. But for the most part, we've not had any experience problems with this product. And, and, and we got a question back here in the back before we go to anyone. This young man's had his hand up for a half an hour. What, what's your question? Everybody heard that question? Have, did everybody hear that? Question is, thinking of a, a fitting that clamps onto the flare part coming out of the unit. Um, I don't think our the engineers working on this product have thought of that, but it's definitely a good idea. At this point, we don't have anything in the works for it, though. But good idea. Maybe Maybe we'll think about that one. What else we got? Yep. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so we do have a whole lineup of zoom lock compatible. We have ball valves, we have um, filter dryers, we have seals. So we have a whole lineup of products that have that extended fitting at the end or extended pipe at the end, which will make it compatible with both zoom lock push and zoom lock max. So good question. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think that is the recommended actual written down literature number, 18 inches. Just don't burn it. That's what we recommend. Anything else? I thought I saw one somewhere over here. Oh, come on. Nothing? Right. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you so much, everyone. So a horse walks in the bar. <laughs> we got our comedian here. Wide a long face, yeah. <laughs>